Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you tonight, Father. We thank you for all that you have done. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. We give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, guys. Hallelujah. Surprise, I'm teaching tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you ready? What are you expecting tonight? Fire? Fire? Apostle Faith was saying in the office, she said, I know you have a powerful word for us tonight. And I said, absolutely. I have one word for you tonight. Literally. One word. Amen. And that's what my whole message tonight will be. One word. Are you ready? You all want to know what that word is? No? No? <laughs> well, then you can, the door is over there. Hey, Jesus only preached to those who were hungry. Amen. He didn't go after the religious people. He didn't go after those who didn't want him. Amen. They had to come to him. They were hungry. They were thirsty and they came to him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just razzing you. You know that. Hallelujah. So Apostle has been teaching about the realities, the realms and realities of the new creation, right? How many of you have been enjoying that so far? Hallelujah. Say, I'm a new creature. Say, I'm a new creature. Look at your neighbor and say, you haven't seen anything like me before. Amen. You guys are all uniquely wonderful. Hallelujah. And you're all created in his image. In, in God's image after God's likeness. Just like him. So if people want to see God, they can just look at you. Right? If people say, I want to see God, just say, look at me. This is what he looks like right now to you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready for tonight? So in the new creature, one of the realities of the new creature, are you ready for your word? Are you ready? One of the realities of the new creation, the new creature, the new creation is <laughs> I like you guys are trying to guess it. I see people mouthing different words. I saw love. Anybody else want to guess? Huh? Huh? Hope. All right, enough guessing. The realities, one of the realities of the new creation is miracles. <laughs> miracles right? Miracles are not supposed to be uh, incidental or accidental. It's supposed to be on purpose. It's supposed to be a lifestyle. We are a walking warehouse of miracles. The new creature is a walking warehouse of miracles. Amen? We are supernatural beings. We are a brand new creation. We are a creation that the enemy couldn't even fathom. He had no clue. Amen? Because the Bible says if he did, he would not have killed Jesus if he had known what was coming. So imagine that. We, of course, Jesus is our standard. Jesus is our big brother, right? He is, he's God in human form, but so are you. Amen? 
we take after his pattern. He's, he's the pattern that we are cut from. Amen? I like how Apostle puts it. He's the prototype. But we were the real idea. We were God's idea. We were the idea that Satan had no clue about. He saw Jesus and thought that was it. But God's master plan was to take Jesus and multiply him infinitely through you and through me. Amen? Eternity now. Hallelujah. We've just come out of power school, but that doesn't matter. Amen? <laughs> power school is part of us. We don't have to s separate what we've learned in power school. We need to incorporate in our everyday lives. Amen. What we learn here is we learn to incorporate in our everyday lives and miracles are supposed to be a lifestyle for the new creature. Amen. Now, those of you who are part of kingdom embassy, those of you who are part of this family, Christ love ministries, m the miraculous is just normal for you, right? Right? You guys see miracles all the time. Amen? Amen? But I want to give you eight things today that you must understand to walk in this miracle lifestyle. Amen? Are you ready? This is Bible study night, right? Wisdom Wednesday. So I hope you guys have your Bibles. You know, I went to a Christian school when I was young and we had victory drills. Well, they called them victory drills. Yes, sword drills, yes. So we had to, they would call out a scripture and you had to find it as quickly as possible. So we had to race, basically. So they would just keep calling out different scriptures and we would have to just keep finding them, amen? And then whoever was the fastest would get a little prize. So we got very familiar with the Bible. So we're having a sword drill today. Are you ready? Yes. Hallelujah. So eight things that we must understand to walk in this lifestyle of miracles. Number one, are you ready? Yes. Is your motivation. And the wonderful thing here is that the first letter of each word spells miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. So that is our word today. Miracles. Everyone say miracles. So the first one is your motivation. Everyone say motivation. And what is our motivation? Margaline. You said it. Love. Love is our motivation. The Bible says that faith... I, do you want me to give you the references? Or do you want me to just quote? <laughs> I'm giving you the references, amen? Like I said, this is Bible study, and I'm a teacher. You're going to learn. Yes. Galatians 5, verse 6. Galatians 5, verse 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith. Everyone say faith. Faith, faith which works by love. Without love, you're just making a lot of noise, right? That's what the Bible says in Corinthians. Without love, you got faith, hope, love, but the greatest is love. God is love. We've talked about love so much. This is Christ love ministry. This is who we are. We are born of love. We talk about it so much because it is sorely missing in the churches. Amen. Amen. They have faith. They have uh, uh, doctrines. They have the word. They have all these things, but they lack love. But the Bible says here, faith works by love. Miracles work by love. Love is our motivation. Amen? Love is our driving force. Everything that we do, we do because of love. We serve because of love. 
We open our businesses because of love. Amen? Everything that we do, we do out of love, not out of obligation. Not out of, well, everybody else is doing it, so I'm just going to join in and do it too. And hopefully it works for me. You need to have the right motivation. If you want to walk in this miracle lifestyle, you need to have the right motivation. You're not motivated by power. You're not motiv motivated by status. You're not motivated by what you can get. Amen? Not motivated by positions, but motivated by love. Everyone say love. love. Jesus, throughout the Gospels, it says Jesus was moved with compassion. He was moved by love. Everything he did, he did out of love. John 3, 16, right? Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave. So love the world. We give because we love. We serve because we love. We teach because we love. Amen? We correct because we love. Everything is out of love. That's our motivation. Say, that's my motivation. Jesus healed. He was moved by compassion just as we should be moved by compassion amen, amen. moved not looked <laughs> amen yes. you know i say this compassion is the passion that comes when you when you perceive a need amen it's a passion that comes to meet the need it's compassion it compels you to move it compels you to do something amen pity will pet the problem but compassion will fix the problem amen you're not you, people don't need you just to feel sorry for them they don't need us to feel sorry for them they don't need us to say oh i'll pray for you i mean prayer is good amen but people are looking for practical help amen they need wisdom, they need miracles, they need the supernatural power of God. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So, motivation, your motivation is love. The next one is I, right? Your inspiration. So the first one is your motivation. Second one is your inspiration looking unto Jesus. Jesus is our inspiration. Amen? Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Very popular scripture. Looking unto who? Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Jesus. Why? Because that's where our inspiration comes from. That's where our help comes from. He is our source. Amen? We don't need to look anywhere else. You don't have to look to a husband or a wife. You don't even have to look to a pastor or an apostle or a prophet. Amen? You look to Jesus. Yes, he uses people. Amen? Amen. So don't misunderstand me. God does use people. But it's Jesus who is your standard. It's Jesus that you draw inspiration from. We can be inspired by one another, but if you are not careful, you can put too much faith, too much trust into a human being, and then when they let you down, you're devastated. But if your trust, the Bible says, put your trust in God alone. When your trust is in God alone, I put it this way, I say, trust only God. God is the only one you trust, and you believe the best about everybody else. Because when your trust is in God, you will never be disappointed, ever. Even when people mess up, you're not destroyed. Because your trust, your faith, your hope, your everything is in God alone. Amen? Amen? Let him be your source of inspiration. He is the author of our faith, right? He is, he's the one who, he began it, he will finish it. He's the author and the finisher 
of our faith. Amen? Psalms chapter 5, verse 3. This is David. He said, my voice, I love this, this scripture. I love this scripture. It's so beautiful. It says, he's, he's speaking to God. He said, my voice shall you hear in the morning. Is your voice the first thing God hears in the morning? God is looking to hear your voice in the morning. Amen? My voice shall you hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto you and will look up. Everyone say, look up. Psalm 121 verse 1 says, lift up your eyes, look unto the hills. From whence comes your help? Your help comes from the Lord. Amen? He is our source of inspiration. When you are dis feeling discouraged, confused, things don't seem to be going the way you thought they should go, look up. Turn to your neighbor and say, look up. Don't look down. Don't cast your eyes down. Look up. Amen? Look up at your inspiration. We say, when you look up, you're inspired. You're inspired to do miracles. Amen? Why? Because you, what you become, what you behold. When you look up, you become what you behold. So when you behold Jesus, then you become like him. You act like him. You talk like him. You behave like him. Amen? So looking unto Jesus, he is your inspiration. He makes sure that what we believe comes to pass because of what he did. Amen. Number three is R, your revelation. Everyone say revelation. revelation. Colossians chapter one. Verse 26, your revelation, what revelation? Christ in you, amen? Christ in you. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Amen? This mystery is not a mystery any longer. This is the revelation of Christ, Christ in me and I am in him. We are one with him. Amen? Of his fullness have we received. John 1.16 of his fullness have we received. We are filled full with him. This is the revelation. I'm talking about eight things we must understand in order to live and walk this miracle lifestyle. Amen? This reality of the new creation. You need to have a revelation of who you are. Amen. I'm talking about your identity. Amen? A revelation of all that God has placed within you, all that you are capable of doing because of his mighty power that's at work in you. Amen? Amen. I want to read Colos Colossians chapter 2, starting in verse 6, but I want to read from the Living Bible. Is this helping anybody? Colossians 2 verse 6 says, And now, just as you trusted Christ to save you, trust him too for each day's problems. Live in vital union with him. Live in vital. It's vital. It's necessary for you to walk in victory, for you to live this miraculous supernatural lifestyle. Live in vital union with him. It's your choice. Amen? It's our choice. Verse 7. Let your roots grow down into him and draw up nourishment from him. See that you go on growing in the Lord, 
and become strong and vigorous in the truth you were taught. This is pretty self-explanatory. Isn't this good stuff? Yes. So let your roots grow down into him. Don't pull yourself out. Amen. How do you pull yourself out? Fear, doubt, you know, um, disconnecting from your life source. Draw up nourishment from him. See that you go on growing in the Lord. We have to keep growing. If you're not growing, you're dying. Become strong and vigorous in the truth you were taught. Be strong and vigorous in the truth. Be strong and vigorous in the truth. Amen. The truth is very important. I'm going to get to that because I'm going to, I'm going to jump ahead of myself if I continue with that. Let your lives overflow with joy and thanksgiving for all he has done. Verse 8. Don't let others spoil your faith and joy with their philosophies. Everyone say amen. amen. Don't let other people, religious people, family members, co-workers, whoever, the guy who cut you off on the street. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Don't let others spoil your faith and joy. Remember, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Keep a smile on your face. Amen. With their philosophies, their wrong and shallow answers. <laughs> I love this. Their wrong and shallow answers built on men's thoughts and ideas, not on truth. Everyone say truth. Stick to the truth. The truth is where you must live. Amen? I keep trying to jump ahead of myself. Instead, so don't let others spoil you from from your faith and joy with all this nonsense instead of on what Christ has said. Focus on the truth. For in Christ, there is all of God in a human body. Who is Christ? Raise your hand. Say, I am Christ. So in Christ, there is all of God in a human body. This is the revelation that we must have. So you have everything. Say, I have everything. When you have Christ. And you are filled with God through your union with Christ. Filled to the full. That means even your hair is full of God. Amen? That hair that fell on the floor, that's full of God. He is the highest ruler with authority over every other power. And he's given us that power as his children, as his heirs, as his sons. Amen. Verse 11. When you came to Christ, he set you free from your evil desires, not by a bodily operation of circumcision, but by a spiritual operation, the baptism of your souls. For in baptism, you see how your old evil nature died with him and was buried with him, right? So the old you is dead and gone. You are a new creature. <laughs> All the old stuff is gone. Don't resurrect it. Amen. That is not what we use our resurrection power for. Amen. Please. Leave it buried. For in baptism you see how your old evil nature died with him and was buried with him. And then you came up out of death with him into a new life. Everyone say, a new life. Say, I have a new life. Forget about the old life. Because you trusted the word of the mighty God who raised Christ from the dead. Isn't this powerful? 
I'm enjoying reading it. So whether you guys like it or not, I'm having a good time here. Verse 13. You were dead in sins, and your sinful desires were not yet cut away. Then he gave you a share in the very life of Christ. He gave you, say, I have a share. Say, it's my portion. Say, it belongs to me. Say, God's life, supernatural life, miraculous life, divine life. Say, it belongs to me. Say, it's my life. It's my life. That's right. For he forgave all your sins and blotted out, verse 14, and blotted out all the charges proved against you, the list of his commandments which you had not obeyed. That's the old covenant. Amen? We're no longer under that old covenant of condemnation. We're under a new one of grace and power and mercy. Amen? Amen? He took this list of sins and destroyed it by nailing it to Christ's cross. In this way, God took away Satan's power to accuse you of sin. I said, Satan is the accuser. Jesus is the excuser. Amen. Amen. Satan will accuse you of your past, accuse you of mistakes, accuse you of being this, that, and the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus will always excuse you. What does that mean? There's always a way out. Amen. Amen. He excuses you. That, that's what his blood was all, for, all about. That's what his mercy is all about. Amen? Amen? So God took away Satan's power to accuse you of sin. And God openly displayed to the whole world Christ's triumph at the cross where your sins were all taken away. It's all a done deal. Say it's a done deal. It's a done deal. Amen? You're not struggling with sin anymore. You're not struggling with sickness anymore. Jesus said it is finished. Amen? Amen? So you have to come in line with that. And you have to say that to yourself. It is finished. The old struggles, it's finished. Amen? Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, also the Living Bible. For God took the sinless Christ and poured into him our sins. Then in exchange, he poured God's goodness into us. The great exchange. Jesus took all the bad so he could give us all the good. Amen? That's it in a nutshell. But that's the revelation of Christ in you. Amen? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22, also the Living Bible. And God has put all things under his feet and made him the supreme head of the church, which is his body filled with himself. Amen? Whatever's in the head flows into the body. I don't have different blood from the neck up, right? The same blood that's flowing through the head is flowing through the rest of my body. So the same stuff that flows through Jesus is flowing through you and me. Because we are his body. We're not different. We are filled with himself. The author and giver of everything everywhere. <laughs> he gives us everything everywhere. So it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you're in the desert. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of a rainforest. It doesn't matter if you are in the middle of the slums. Amen. He has given you all things to enjoy. All things that pertain to life and godliness. Amen. All we have to do is access it by revelation. Everyone say revelation. Last scripture, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. We are joined, we are enmeshed with him. Amen. 
not just connected, we've been absorbed. Amen? We're not just connected to him, we've been absorbed into him. Amen? So when, that's why when the devil looks at you, he sees God. The only time he, he sees anything else is by what comes out of our mouths, by what we display, amen? When we manifest something other than our divinity, amen? So revelation, everyone say revelation. What number are we on now? Four. A, your acceleration. So yes, all the words rhyme too, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> acceleration. You must understand that everything that we do must increase. Everything that we do, there has to be an increase. There has to be productivity. There has to be acceleration. There has to be action. Everyone say action. 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 Amen. You know, you cannot accelerate until you have already started moving. That's basic physics. In order to accelerate, something must already have started moving. Amen. So if you want acceleration in your life, then you need action first. You've got to act first. You've got to step out. You've got to do something that you've never done before. That is the miracle lifestyle. Stepping out in boldness. If you want acceleration in your life, you have to be doing something. Because God cannot increase nothing. He is the God of increase. He brings the increase. We're going to read those scriptures. Are you ready? Are you ready? 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 12. And the Lord make you to increase. He makes you to increase. He expects you to increase. He doesn't expect you to decrease. He doesn't, he doesn't want you to decrease. And he doesn't want you to be stagnant. He doesn't want you at a standstill. Amen? Waiting, I've already said this before, waiting on the Lord doesn't, doesn't mean sitting back and waiting for God to do something. Waiting on the Lord means serving. Amen? Like a waiter waits on you if the waiter if the waiter is waiting on you and they just stand there and wait for you to get it yourself that would not be a very good waiter right no no tip for them no tip no nothing no job either <laughs> no paycheck no nothing and it's the same thing waiting on the lord if you're sitting back and just waiting for god to do everything then you're irrelevant right? So everyone say action. action. The Lord will make you to increase. When you step out, when you obey, when you follow his instructions, you follow the Holy Spirit's leading. Amen. He will lead you. The Bible says he will lead you into all truth. He is our guide. He is our leader. We follow him. He will not lead you to destruction. He will not lead you to despair. He will lead you to increase. He will lead you to success. He will lead you to the miraculous. Amen? Hallelujah. Acceleration. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. For you are yet carnal. For whereas... There is among you envying and strife and divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? Remember, you're a new creature. You're not just human, right? We supersede that. 
But if you are caught up in envying and strife and divisions, then you are being human. Amen? Amen. Caught up in all this nonsense. For while one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? In other words, majoring on minors. Who cares? Who cares if you come from Paul or you come from Apollos? Are you following Jesus? Amen? I remember when we were in um, Nigeria, and, and even, not even in Nigeria, but other places too. T when TB Joshua first came on the scene, of course he was very controversial because he did things that people never saw before. Hello, behold, I do a new thing. They don't read their Bibles. And so they would, I remember they asked the apostle and they said, you know, what do you think about TB Joshua? And what do you think? Is he from God? And da, 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 da. And I said, what are the results? Are people being saved? Are they being healed? Are they being delivered? Is he preaching Jesus? Then he's for the kingdom. Back off. Amen? Just because you don't understand necessarily the workings, be careful because you're treading on dangerous ground when you start criticizing what you don't understand. Amen? Never criticize what you do not understand, ever, because it could cost you your life. And I am being very serious here. Amen? God said, touch not mine anointed. If you're not sure, just keep your mouth shut. We say better safe than sorry, right? If, you, if you're not sure what to say, don't say anything at all. Because the moment you open your mouth, you've committed yourself. Amen? So they were arguing. I'm of Paul. We're of Apollos. And he said, you guys are just, you're, you're, you're acting stupid. Amen? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Amen? Notice here, he says, Paul said, I planted and Apollos watered. Action. God gave the increase because Paul planted and Apollos watered. They did what they were supposed to do. They put action behind their dreams, amen? And then God could give the increase. Everyone say acceleration. So then neither is he that plants anything, neither he that waters, but God that gives the increase. Now he that plants and he that waters are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to what? You receive your own reward according to what? What does it say? Are you guys following along? Did I jump ahead? What does it say? I want you to say it. Every man shall receive his own reward. I hope you're following along in your Bibles. You're just waiting for me to read it to you. According to your own labor. He rewards you according to your own work, your own labor, your own action. You can only accelerate something that's already moving. Amen? Amen? Verse 9, for we are laborers together with God. You're not alone. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Next one, number 5. Are we on number 5? Yes. See your consecration. Say consecration. What is consecration? You are called, when you are consecrated, you are called to something. Amen? You are called into something. You're called to something. 
You are consecrated, dedicated to a ministry. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And here is our wonderful scripture, right? Yes, if any man. Therefore, if any man be in Christ or woman, it means people. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Hallelujah. All things are become new. Verse 18. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us what? The ministry of reconciliation. You have been consecrated to the ministry of reconciliation. You have been called to the ministry of reconciliation. Everything that a believer does is in the ministry of reconciliation. Everything. Amen? That's our ministry. So you hear people say, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm uh, called to the... Um, gifts of faith, and I'm called to laying on of, you know, speaking in tongues and blah, 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 blah all these different, different, yeah, deliverance and all the, no, you're called to the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. And whatever it takes to fulfill that ministry, that's what you're called to. Amen. The ministry of reconciliation, reconciling people back to God. Verse 19, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Say, it's committed to me. Verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. We are his ambassadors, reconciling people back to him. That's what it's all about. That's what all of this is about, is reconciling. What does that mean? It means bringing them back. Bringing them back to God, amen? Reconnecting them to their creator. That's what reconcilia reconciliation means. Amen? Amen? John chapter 15, verse 16. This is another one of my favorites. He says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Say, I am chosen. I am chosen. And ordained you. Say, I am ordained. I am ordained. That you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. What is that fruit? Amen? What is that fruit? That fruit is the people that we bring back to Jesus. That's the fruit we're talking about. Souls. Everyone say souls. That whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. Amen? See, when you're doing the Father's business... He will take care of your business. Amen? So your consecration. This is your consecration. This is what you are called to. Next one. We're almost done. What are we on? Number six. Yes, six. Your liberation. Everyone say liberation. John chapter 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. So if you continue in his word, you shall know the truth. Amen? See, it's a continuous statement. We always like to just quote, you shall know the truth, but how? How do you know the truth? You must continue in his word. 
That is how you know the truth. You don't know the truth by osmosis. You don't know the truth by prayer. Amen? You know the truth by continuing in his word. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, this is another one that gets misquoted all the time, and I hear you guys misquote it all the time. You always say, and the truth will set you free. No, it says the truth will make you free. You have been made free. You were set free in Calvary. You were set free at Calvary. But when you know the truth, you become free. You become freedom. You are made free. In other words, that, that you become the manifestation of freedom. It's an eternal freedom. You can no longer be put in bondage because something that has been set free can be put in bondage again. But if you've been made free, you have become the manifestation of that freedom and you can no longer be put back in bondage. We need to quote these things properly. We keep just repeating things over and over that we've heard. Go back to what the Word of God says. Amen? The truth shall make you free. That means you are so free, like uh, you become a captive of freedom. Amen? You become a captive of freedom. You can't escape your freedom because you have been made free. Amen? So this is, you need to understand your liberation. Liberation means that you've not only been set free, but you've been placed in a position where the enemy can no longer suck you back. He can no longer put you in a cage. He can no longer put you in a prison. Amen? because now you are made free. Say, I'm made free. But only when you know the truth. The truth is what makes you free. John chapter eight, verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, it says it again, not set you free. You've already been set free. But if the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. That means exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Amen? You are absolutely 100% free. There is nothing pulling you back anymore. Amen? Second Corinthians 3.17 now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit is, there is liberty. Everyone say liberty. Hallelujah. And Galatians 5 verse 1, stand fast therefore. Everyone say stand fast. Stand fast. That means don't move. Don't shift your position, your position of freedom. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has what? Made us free, not set us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen? So you must understand you are absolutely 100% without a doubt free, 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 free. Amen? Don't let anybody try to put chains back on you. Remember what we read? Don't let anybody spoil your faith and your joy by their vain philosophies, by their stupid teachings. Amen? Always go back to the truth. Go back to the word. Amen? Next one, number seven. We're almost done. E your elevation. Everyone say elevation. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. We're all the seed of Abraham, right? The blessings of Abraham now belong to us. So Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. God is speaking to Abraham, and I will make of you a great nation. He's talking about you now. 
We are that great nation, right? A holy nation. And I will bless you and make your name great. God will make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. No longer trying to get a blessing here, get a blessing there, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. No, you are the blessing. You become the blessing. Amen? So when people come and contact you, they are, they are blessed. Amen? Why? Because miracles are your lifestyle. You are the miracle in your world. That is the reality of the new creation. Verse 3, and I will bless them, I will bless them that bless you, and curse him that curses you, and in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. What's going on with the mic? I'm almost done. Job 36 verse 7. Now this verse I'm going to read from three different tra uh, translations. Job 36 verse 7 from the Amplified says, he, he, should I get another mic? Hallelujah. Should I turn this one off? Hallelujah. Job 36 verse 7 in the Amplified, it says, He withdraws not his eyes from the righteous, but he sets them forever with kings upon the throne, and they are exalted. Talking about us. Amen? He, let me read from the Living Bible. Same verse. He does not ignore the good men, but honors them by placing them upon eternal kingly thrones. You have been elevated. Say, I'm elevated. Same scripture, Message Bible. He never takes his eyes off the righteous. He honors them lavishly and promotes them endlessly. How many of you like that one? I love that one. He never takes his eyes off the righteous. He will never leave you or forsake you. You are his righteousness. You are the righteous ones. Amen? He will never take his eyes off of you. He will never leave you or forsake you. And not only that, but he will honor you because of your righteousness. Amen? Because you understand, you have the revelation of who you are. You are you are stepping out you're acting on what he's called you to do amen you're 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 living in your freedom that he has made you to be amen and then he honors you lavishly and promotes you endlessly endless promotion i love how the living the, the message bible puts it So, we have been elevated. He will make your name great. You don't have to try to become great. He will just make you that way. Amen? Psalm 37, verse 34. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. Amen? He will exalt you to inherit, to possess your possession. Hallelujah. Luke 14, verse 11. For whosoever exalts himself shall be abased. Remember I said, you don't have to try and make something happen. Amen. In other words, you don't, you don't have to try. That's what I'm trying. That's what I'm saying. Amen. You're not trying to be great. You have become, he makes you great. Amen. Just by virtue of who you are and by virtue of your obedience to his word. Amen. For whosoever exalts himself shall be put down. And, but he that humbles himself, that means you come in line with the truth. You humble yourself to the word of God shall be exalted. Amen. Amen. 
Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. By power. Amen? You're saved by power. And has raised us up together, together and made us sit together with him in heavenly places. You have already been elevated. You can't get any higher. Amen? You can't get any higher because we are seated in him. The highest elevation there is. Amen? And the last one, S. Your separation. Your separation. So consecration, you are called to something. Your separation is you are separated from something. Amen? Romans chapter 1 verse 1 says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. Of course, Paul is dead, so you can put your name in there now. Right? A servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God. He's been separated unto the gospel. Amen. Among who, and verse 6, we're going to skip down to verse 6. Among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ? Amen. We are also the called. Say, I'm the called. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. I'm, I'm done. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Separate. You are separated from that. You are separated from the weight. You are separated from the sin. You are separated from the sickness. You are separated from the poverty. You are separated from depression. You are separated from all of those things. Amen? Lay it aside. Separate yourself from that. And run with patience the race that is set before you. Amen? And then John chapter 17. I have given, verse 14, I have given them your word. This is Jesus praying. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. You've been separated from all the evil. You've been separated from all the wickedness, amen, that the world has to offer. Even as I am not of the world. Verse 15. I pray not that you should take them out of the world. Amen. Don't try to escape this great, wonderful world that God created just for you. Amen. We're not here trying to escape. We are here to dominate. Amen. Jesus said, I'm not praying that you should take them out, but that you should keep them from the evil. A thousand shall fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. No plague, no evil of any kind shall come near your dwelling. You have been separated. Amen. Verse 16, they are not of the world. So don't try to be like the world. Don't go to the world for your, don't go to the world as your source. Amen. Don't look to the world as your source. Remember Jesus looking unto Jesus. He is your inspiration not the world. The world has nothing to offer you, but you have everything to offer it. Amen. The world is looking for you, looking for the manifestation of the sons, looking for the manifestation of the new creation. Amen. 
looking for the miracle that you are. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Verse 17, and I'm done. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. Amen? Never veer from the truth. Stick to the truth like glue. Amen? No matter how you feel, because that is where your salvation is. That is where your source is. Amen? The truth. Everyone say the truth. Has this helped you tonight? Amen? Hallelujah. I think Apostle is coming forward. I think he has something to say. Do you want to add something? Okay. Come on, let's clap our hands and celebrate her. <laughs> that was a, a teaching on how to really heal the sick. Can I have a big amen? Can I have a big amen? I was really enjoying it. Amen. Praise God. Let's see. What do we have? Everyone is running around trying to fix me. It's trying to make some people jealous. I know your move now. <laughs> Wasn't that wonderful for Mama? Come on, let's celebrate her again. Hallelujah. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Everybody say good stuff. Say good stuff. Amen. Now what we're going to do is uh, the word is enough for the wise. There is nothing to add to it. All you need to do is execute it. Can I have a big amen? Mama teaches very well and I uh, took notes to go and preach later. I, that's how it works. It's, it's the message of the kingdom. Hallelujah. You know, I remember Dr. T. L. Osman used to tell us, you know, he said, you hear my message? Go and copy it. It's called copyright. The right to copy. <laughs> copyright is the right to copy. Copy it. Post it somewhere. You know, just talk about Jesus. If you don't know how to talk about him, just, just make flyers about him. Whatever which way you can get that across, you get it across. Can somebody say amen? amen. So, but we are very excited about what God has you know, spoken to us tonight. The key is implementation. At this time, what we're going to do is we want to give you an opportunity. You see, the gospel cannot go forward except people put some effort into it. Good news untold is no good news at all. But for them to tell it, somebody must be there to tell it. We get the message out to the world through television, through um, the internet, to, through different things. But the question is, how did you hear about this? How, how, how did you hear about the gospel? Somebody came and gave it, gave it to you. Amen. So when we share and encourage other people um, and we invest in the gospel, Great things do happen. Can somebody say amen? Now let's look at um, Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 22. It declares very clearly, as long as the earth remains, hallelujah. Yes, 822. No. Deuteronomy 8, 18. Okay, 818. It says, uh, Genesis 822, that's the one in Deuteronomy 818. It says, 8.18 says, remember the Lord your God in the day you prosper. Eight, not 18. Not 8.20, but you get it. 8.18, two back. That's it. But thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth. Why? That he may establish his covenant, which is sworn unto thy fathers as it is today. When God prospers you, you act on it. I'm going to share a testimony that came this afternoon. You were a witness to it. Um, 
on Saturday, how many of you remember the breakfast on Saturday? The mission's breakfast. We have so much to do around the world. We have a lot of people to help. You know, we have a lot of things to do. Pastor Luis is going, we need to get things like cameras and things. We need to get those things. Can somebody say amen? But we can't do that with our finances. And he cannot be the only one sponsoring it. Can I have a big amen? It becomes a collective effort. But it wouldn't work without understanding the mission of the, of the king. So, um, I think it's okay for him. He's probably watching. So, Nick, Evangelist Nick and Jasmine. So, that morning, he felt prompted in the spirit to so, to pledge 5,000. You know, he, he, they said 5,000, but that was what his faith was. But the Holy Ghost told him 10,000. He was like, oh, I'm not sure about that, you know. But he said, Lord, I want to be able to pay this over time. So they heard me say 10,000, and God told him, you need to do that. But he had the faith for 5,000. Guess what happened? Call today. He said, that I just had a business deal that the 5,000 appeared, I get it by Friday. I wish he would have had faith for 10,000. <laughs> he believed for 5,000 and it came. God was prompting him 10,000. Amazing. But the thing is, you break that barrier, break the next one. Can I have a big amen? Can I have a big amen? And he was so excited. I said, this is less than a week before, uh, a week after, and you're already getting a harvest. See, what you do, you mentioned that, mom mentioned that. When you get involved in God's business, he gets involved in your business. Can I have a big amen? So this is the embassy. Those of you that are watching us, we're going to give you an opportunity to invest in the kingdom. Can somebody say amen? Now, how do you do it? Now, some people say, I'm going to pray. That's fine. But no, no one ever hears because you prayed. They're here because somebody told them. Somebody sent. And we, like, we thank God for your prayer, but no one, no one ever hears it but God. Am I telling the truth? Until you send, nobody goes. Can I have a big amen? So we're going to take an opportunity here. And uh, our dear brother, you know, you, you mentioned about the hunger you have for revival in New England. Can somebody say amen? God sent him from a different place to come to New England because there is a fire about to happen in New England. What is it? I have, I had a question to ask you right after the service about revival. Because that's, that's just been a burden in my heart. And, and the whole of today. It... You're the invisible man. No one sees you on TV. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just, I just shouted, wow, because I've been having the burden. And the whole of today, it's just been in my heart. And I'm like, right after the service, I'm going to come to you and ask you. I had the question yesterday. I was going to text. I'm like, I'm going to wait for today to ask you about revival. Because it was just in my heart. And we were discussing that this afternoon. Am I right? outside just before the service we're discussing about revival say i am revival say it again see you are the fire starters because you are the fire of god can i have a big amen god did not send us to new england just to have the american dream there are places we could be but we came here because this is what god spoke to us many years ago you see this is the east, the sun rises from the east. Revival starts and goes all the way to the west. Can somebody say amen? That's why you're here. You're not here to have the nice American dream. That's fine. But there's more. Everybody said there's more. Can you adjust this mic a little bit? Now, the, the reason I'm saying this is you have to understand that you are revival. Say, I am revival. 
You see, God is ready to touch New England and touch America. We need God in America again. Can somebody say amen? We need to start. Remember we talked about the 50 state tour? We want to hit every state of this union plus the territories. Can I have a big amen? There needs to be a fire burning in this nation again. Amen. We can't do that thinking small. We're going to think on the size of God. Whatever we have, we have to invest in the gospel. Can I have a big amen? You know, most people think, well, if I just have my thing, I'm fine. I have my kids. That's wonderful. But the thing is, what mark are you going to leave for eternity? Are you a history maker? Or are you just a reader of history? Are you with me? So this is to provoke you. What can you do to get things to happen? You see, we want God to move, but we are unwilling to be where he is moving. Isn't that true? We cannot do convenience anymore. Can I have a big amen? If we want the fire of God, there is a cost to that glory. There's a cost to that anointing. There's a cost to what God is doing. It's going to cost you everything. Can I have a big amen? It's going to cost you some friendships. It's going to cost you some of your jobs. It's going to cost you everything. But it's worth it. Can somebody say amen? What would you do to see others live? Are you willing to die so that others might live? The Bible says, as he laid his life down for, for, for us, we ought also to lay down our lives for others. A lot of Christians don't believe their Bibles. So we said, oh, I know, I'm going to lay my life down, but no, Jesus, you know, you know, I got stuff to do. Am I right? What is the fire in your belly? What is it burning in you? See, I didn't come to the United States because I didn't have something else to do. I came here on a mission. Can somebody say amen? Every day, live it with purpose. Don't just hang out. Don't just talk. Listen, let your words be few, but your actions be bold and a lot. Amen. So I'm encouraging you tonight. You've heard this great message. Listen to it over and over. Get into your spirit. M-I-R-A-C-L-E-S. -M -I Miracles. You can find out what it says. Are you hearing me? Understand that. Go and teach others. Multiply what God is doing. Amen. But also make an investment in the kingdom. So that we can get this gospel to the nations. Amen. It's not enough just to get your family saved. It's not enough just to get your town saved. Or your city saved. Be such a blazing fire. That the world will come and watch you burn. Amen. This is what it's about. Most times people just want to do their own thing. Well listen. If you handle God's business. He's going to handle your business. Amen. Whatever you make happen for others, God is going to make happen for you. Did you hear what I said? If you make something happen for me, don't expect it from me. Expect it from God. God is going to double what you did for me. Amen. He knows how to balance his books. <laughs> Amen. God knows how to balance the books. In other words, God wants to do something incredible, but he needs you. Say, God needs me. Say it again. Say it again. You know, if you can trust God with your finances, I'm telling you, God will put his finances in your hands. Amen. God is not lacking anything, but God needs something from you. He will say, what do you have in your hands? He always requires what you have. You can't say, Lord, I have nothing. I said, what do you have? Moses said that. He said, no, look at the rod in your hand. There's a miracle in your house. Look for something. Can I have a big amen? You have some miracle. You have a miracle in your house. It could be just the little, the, the five loaves of bread and two fishes. Give it to the Lord and see what happens. It could be the little oil that is left over, the cruise of oil that's left. Give it, give it and pour it out. As you pour it out, it would never run out. Can I have a big amen? It only runs out when you stop pouring. Are you with me? Is this helping you guys? Is this helping you? Smile. 
Hallelujah. Now hear this. For those of you that are watching tonight, we're going to give you an opportunity. If you're, if you're doing it by PayPal, you go to paypal.me forward slash Charles and Devon. If you're doing it by um, cash app, it's the dollar sign, Charles and Devon. It will be on your screen. Or you can go to our website, christlove.org, and you click the donate button and it will direct you to where you can sow your seeds tonight. Also, if you're doing Venmo, you go to at sign, dr, period, Charles, hyphen, and defund. And you'll be able to sow your seeds there. If you're making out a check, make it out to KEI or Kingdom Embassy. And uh, you can send that also, if, you, if you're making our check, you can send, send it out also to P.O. Box 72800, Providence, Rhode Island, 02907. And I know that the Lord will bless you richly. Can somebody say amen? Just stretch your hands towards me. I'm going to pray a prayer for those people that are watching. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for everyone that their heart is made willing and is stood up for something great. Does it release a seat tonight? May it produce a hundredfold return. May they expect and receive a 24 hour miracle. Cause a turnaround in their finances. Cause them to walk on e to, to, to rise on eagle's wings. We decree tonight that wherever they go, doors are open to them. Even as we've heard one testimony, we have heard one testimony. Let their lives become a testimonial. So that others can say indeed god is with them we decree that now in the name of jesus and everybody say amen come on let's clap our hands and praise the lord those of you here you can go and sow your seat the lovely ladies are there with you and where is mr divine your promise still stands Everybody repeat after me. The grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with me now and always will be. Amen.